video. Why can't I get that? No. I'm gonna redo that. Hey everyone, Chrissy here with Two Sheep, One Wheat. In today's video, I have an overview video for you and a review, if you choose to stick around till the end, on a board game called Brass Birmingham. Let's get to it. Okay, so in Brass Birmingham, this game is played over one to two hours. It is for two to four players, and you play over two eras. You play over the rail era and the canal era. That was backwards. You play over the canal era and the rail era. So I'll start off. We have two players set up right here, and I will go over the boards first because there's a lot going on on here. So I have first player here that is the yellow player, 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 and I just chose the day side of the board. And if you go over here, this is what the night side looks like. They're the exact same board. They are just one is night and one is day. Now on your board, you have all of these different industries that you can play on your board. So the costs are all right here. Some costs, actually all of them cost money, but some of them cost iron and some of them cost coal too. Now along with that, you do have your links and this is going to link all of your industries together. You do get 15 euros and you are dealt eight cards with the ninth one flipped over. You're playing two actions. So you, normally you would play two cards down, but for your first round for the canal era, you're playing one card because you already have one flipped over. Now every time you play your two cards at the end of your turn, you are going to draw two cards back up to eight in your hand. So that is basically it for the play area and everything that that includes. Now we'll go on to the board, the main board here. So as you can see, all of these icons are basically the exact same industry tiles that you have on your play area. You, what you're doing is you're paying the cost for all of those during your turn so that you can place them on here and you're going to try to link them up with your links, with the boats or with the trains. And what you're doing that for is because when you flip them over, they have these links here. So you go up on your victory point, but that would be at the end of the canal era. So they are all worth usually points, victory points, but whenever you do get them flipped, you get some money. So your income track does go up, but you also get these links. So now whenever you're placing all of these tokens up here, all of these industry tiles, you are hoping to be able to flip them so that you can collect the most victory points at the end of the canal era and at the end of the train era. And what you're doing is you're connecting them with your links, with the boats and with the trains. So that is what you're doing on here. But to be able to sell some of these industry tiles, you need to be connected to these places right here. These will allow you to sell your goods, but now you have to be careful because some of them are blank. And then sometimes you need beer to sell too. So there's a little bit of strategy within here, planning everything out to try to make everything work out for you. So also on the board here, these are your victory point trackers so you start at zero this is your income tracker and you also start at zero now you also if you are connected to any of these coal sites here you'll be able to pay for certain things or if you need them for anything you're connected to those factories so whenever you are connected to any of these which is by a factory token or by a link you'll be able to because of some of the costs for these factories, you do need coal or iron. So these are wilds over here. You have wild industry and you have wild location, and those will allow you to build anywhere because you need these cards here with the locations on them if you're wanting to build there. Now, the only way that you can do, you can build in one of these locations if you don't have the location is if that they are linked there and you have one of these good cards the industry cards so on your round you are performing two actions and those actions can be building which is paying the cost and building the industry tile on the board so you need to be able to pay for those but you need to be connected to those. Whenever you place this one here, you need to be able to place these 
iron cubes on there. So what you would do is you would take it from here and you can take four. It holds four, so you would be able to put four there. Now, because Iron cubes, you don't need to be connected to anything, even though that we are, but this is for the hole. But if you are looking to sell your iron, you can do that from anywhere. Now, because there are two slots open here, you would be able to fill this up and actually gain the amount here, which would be two dollars because, or two euros, because that is how many you had placed. So you would bring that to your supply and that would now mean that you only need to take two more cubes off of there to be able to flip it over. Now your first round that you do, you do not have any locations already on the board so you would be able to place them anywhere but you need to build off of that and hopefully you can connect them all too. Now that would be building, now you can also network which is placing your links down. So you, if you were able to pay the cost for that, let's go here. So for the canal era, the cost to build a link is three and you can only place the boat side up. Now some of the tracks on here are only, where's the canal? Only canals or some of them are only the train tracks. So you need to pay attention whenever you are playing to make sure that you're placing your links on the correct locations and the right side. Now whenever you get into the rail era, now there is a different cost for it. They cost more money and now you also need coal. And to be able to build two links, you'd need two coal and a beer. So it is very important that you place all of your goods, all of your industry tiles to be able to have enough resources to be able to pay for everything that you need to do. So that was networking, placing the link tiles. Now you can also develop. Now that means you can pay one to two iron cubes to be able to remove one to two industry tiles on your board. Now the reason that you would want to do that is because if you notice here some of these icons here is the same as this. Now these can only, these tiles can only be placed during the canal era. And if you do not have them placed out by the time that the rail era comes out, you would need to be able to get those off of your board. So this is where develop comes in handy. So because let's just say we would take two of these to be able to take off two of these because say we're already in the rail era, we can't place these. We would need to remove them so that we can place these ones here. Now there are ones too, like this one right here and this one right here. Now these ones you can only place during the rail era. So if you can pay for all of these costs during the canal era, good for you because I've never been able to do that. <laughs> so that would be doing the develop. Now selling is being able to flip over the goods, the manufacturing goods or pottery tiles. Now, because I use the last two cubes here that were for this, I'm able to flip that over right away without actually selling anything. And this would allow you to gain three, to go up three on the income track. So what you're doing is you're counting these right here. You're not actually counting the numbers here. So to be able to sell, you would say you are connected to this and you want to sell either, hmm, let's just go ahead with this one because it's connected here. We're going to go ahead and stick cotton right there. Now to be able to sell cotton, you need a beer. Now we are connected over here to Oxford and you are allowed to sell cotton over here with, and it has a beer bottle. Now, a nice thing with this is that whenever on your turn you are using the sell option or the action, the sell action, you can flip this over by using, whoopsies, by using this beer and this action right here for selling this. Now you're using the beer for it, you're sticking that over there. Now we are able to flip this because we sold the cotton. Now you go up five on the track again, on the income track. Now, because we were able to use this beer here, it comes with an extra little benefit for you for being able to use it, being the first person to use it. Now, you actually don't just go up five up of, on the income track, you're actually going up seven. You get that extra two euro bonus. So now, if you haven't been lucky enough to be able to place any of your industry tokens on your board and be able to flip them and sell them 
to gain some income, there is another option and you're actually able to take out a loan from the bank. Now, I would say that it is probably beneficial to take those earlier on in the game because there are different levels up your income. So early on in the game, there are usually only two levels within that income. But if you move down over here to 29 or 30, oh, 30 only has three, but 29 has four and it goes to four all the way up to 21. So you would be going back pretty far that way. It would take a lot longer to catch up. So I would recommend taking loans at the beginning and do not be afraid to take loans. I have taken many, many loans and still won the game by a lot. Now for one last action that you're able to take is scouting. And scouting is basically just discarding some of your cards to be able to collect some of the bonus ones. And those ones will allow you to build anywhere on the board. Even if you're playing two players, some of the cards are actually taking taken out. So these blue and green locations up at the top of the board here, you are not able to play there. Well, I guess there's not cards in your deck that will allow you to play up there because it's only two players. But if you do have one of these, one of these wild cards, you would then be able to place it over there. And that wouldn't be a bad idea if you're trying to hoard all of your beer, because it doesn't matter where it is on the board, you have access to it. And you can tell here by what is available to you and what isn't. So coal, you would need to be connected to be able to sell it or use it. But iron, you don't have to be connected to anything. Your iron is your iron and even somebody else on the board would be able to take your iron. Now beer, for somebody else to be able to take it, they need to be connected. But beer does not have to be connected to the player. The player can just take it off whenever they want, wherever it is on the board. Now, while you're playing, like I said at the beginning, every time you are taking an action, you are placing a card down. Now that be for building, for placing some of your links to develop or sell or take a loan or scout. Doesn't matter what you're doing, you are always putting a card down. And then at the end of your turn, you are drawing back up to eight. So you would draw two cards, except for your first one because your Technic nine would be here. Technic, technically, your ninth card would be here. So anyways, you are discarding two cards for both of your actions, and then you're redrawing two cards from the deck. Then it's the next player's turn, and they're doing the same thing. They're choosing between six actions that they can do. They are choosing two of them, and then they are discarding their two cards and redrawing back up to eight cards. So once the opponent has gone, anything that you're spending money on, you are placing your money on top of your player. The person who has spent the least amount of money that turn for that round would be the first player. So let's just say the first player right now spent $7 where the seven euros, but player two has only spent two euros. They would swap spots and then now yellow would be first player. And then all of the money goes to the bank. Then once that has been figured out, then you would take your income phase and that is just taking from the bank, whatever you are at. Orange player does not get nothing. They didn't do anything, I did all the hard work. And then once that is done, then you would start all over again. Now, because every time your turn is done, you are drawing back up to eight cards, those two cards that you played, the deck will eventually run out. Now, once the deck runs out, you're still taking your turns, but then you're limited because there are no more cards left. So you're still discarding your cards. Now, once all of your cards in your hand are gone, that is the end of the canal era. Now, once that is done, what you are doing is you're calculating all of your links and you're calculating all of your victory points on tiles that are flipped. So like this one, there are two on this one and one on this one, and there are two here. So this would be five victory point, points. So you would move up to five. Now, even if this wasn't my link, this would be this link then the orange player would actually get those five victory points, not yellow player. But let's say that yellow player did have his boat here. And let's go ahead and go with 
cotton. Mm, let's stick cotton here instead. And let's flip it too. Let's just say it was like this. This yellow link would still calculate these two and three and four five. They would still get the points. It doesn't matter whose industry tile it is. It, all that matters is the link. Once all of those have been calculated, everything would refresh. So like I took one of these beers, so that would get refreshed there. All of these links would come off and all of the tiles that are flipped that are level one would also come off and they would get discarded. But let's just say that we moved up a little bit and player, orange player here, was actually able to get a second level, a two, level two on the board. That would actually stay. Essentially, you'd be able to collect the points two times. So once you have counted all of the points for the end of the canal phase, then you move on to the trail, train, rail. Then you move on to the rail phase and you would essentially just do everything all over again. The only thing that is different is that now you are drawing 10 cards. You are not drawing eight cards with one flipped over. And if you have a hard time remembering everything that I just said, this game does come with a player aid. Now to hear what I think about the game. I am not necessarily a huge fan. It is my husband's favorite game. One of them anyway. Now, whenever we do play this game, it's because, like I said, it's an hour to two hour game. I guess depending on how many players you play, we can probably get it done in about an hour, but we have only ever played this game two players. But this game is pretty heavy and I'll be honest with you, I get lost during the second half. <laughs> Now I do enjoy the theme of this game. I am not a fan of the intermission in this game because I forget how things work or lose the grasp of how things are supposed to work. I can completely understand the canal era and that is perfectly fine for me, but because I'm trying to be strategic and I'm trying to collect the most points in this game, I'm trying to get those level two tiles out as fast as I can or even third, fourth levels. And so I utilize the develop option in this game a lot just to get those lower cards or lower, lower tiles out. But then come the second round for the era or for the trail era, some of my tiles are still left out and I find it really difficult to be able to link anything up because in the second round, in the rail era, you are actually needing that coal to be able to build any of the links. It's a nice thing that they did add the two links for a higher cost, but for one option. But whenever I do leave those second, third, fourth, tiles on the board, I find it really hard to grasp my mind around how I'm going to be able to afford to buy the coal when I'm not linked anywhere to sell the coal or to buy the coal. Anyway, you guys will be able to see that in the playthrough that I have. Um, I've already recorded it and everything. It'll be out in the next week or so. So you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. But I do play this game because like I said, it is my husband's, one of them, one of his favorite games to play. I think the theme definitely gets him with this one and he's a pretty good thinker. He likes to think in games or he likes games that make him think. And this is definitely one. There's a lot of strategy to the game and this, this is exactly what he likes but it's a little overwhelming for me. I can get, and you know what? It's super funny because I, you, you guys will see in this playthrough, I honestly forget everything. And it's weird because I'm pretty sure half of the time that we play this game, I win. And I don't even know how I do it. So maybe that's a good thing. It's like beginner's luck every single time because halfway through I forget what I'm doing. I do enjoy this game and I want to hear from you if you also have played this game and have enjoyed it. Does anybody else there have my problem with this intermission in this game and starting a new era halfway through? Let me know in the comments down below and if you enjoyed this video and don't want to miss any more, hit that subscribe button down below and that little bell so that you don't miss another one of my videos. I will catch you guys next video. Wait, what? What is happening? What is happening? I don't understand this.